if you cannot explain something in your own words, then you don't truly understand it. And that's the central principle behind the Feynman technique, which is a method used by the, the brilliant scientist Richard Feynman to not only remember more of what he learned and read, but to truly understand it and to truly integrate it into his mind. In the case of our reading, we can, the best way we can apply that is to just explain what we read in our own words. And if we can only reiterate the words, like if I ask you to explain something and you can just repeat it back to me, or you can rearrange the words a bit, you haven't truly understood it. But then if you take that same sentence and understand and go deeper behind the words and understand the idea behind it, the concept, and then you can use any words you want to explain that, that shows that you've not only processed the words on the page, but the idea behind it. And that's what it means to truly understand something. And luckily for us, that's, that's something we can apply to anything. Any page, any book, any idea, we can apply that basic maxim, explain it in your own words, and then we can just check our understanding whenever we need to. It's such a brilliant tool. And this is a step-by-step -step guide on how you can apply that technique more practically and how you can use it to get more out of your reading and understand the concepts better. Now, the first step, as with many other reading techniques, is to simply find and extract what the author is saying, to read the book analytically and to understand the, the central themes the message trying to be delivered to us and uh, the significance of it. What do we do with that information? Is it true? We have to do all these things to really delve into the, the meat of the book. And of course, you can call this a second step, but it should be done really as you go through the book and it's to mark out the major points. What are the most important things being said and what are the points of action I could take and how does this connect to other things? You need to be really engaging with the book and studying all these different things. Now the third step is to take all those points you marked after maybe you finish the book, you can go back and collect everything and see what are the central takeaways from this book. Because ultimately that's what a book is, it's uh, one big idea wrapped up in a lot of explanation and illustrations to help get the point across. So we need to find and identify those major points. So once we've collected and identified all those key points, we can then extract them and kind of make them our own, in a sense. We can write them in our own words, we can link them to other things we know, and we can put them all in this area that we have to manage and standardise them. Now that could be a, a physical notepad, it could be a Notion page or any other of these note-taking apps. The point is to have them somewhere we, where we can experiment with them and make them our own, rather than keeping them within the context of the book, which may hinder our application in other areas. Now the fourth step is where the magic happens, where this technique really shines, and it's about deciding on a teaching style. The format is unimportant, it doesn't matter how we teach, and it, we don't even need to have an audience, in most cases we won't, but the point is we have to decide on a way that we can teach what we learn in our own words, so we can then understand it and check ourselves. And that could be in any number of formats, and I'll, I'll just list a few. You could write articles on what you've learned. You could even tweet about what you've read. You could make reviews on, on Goodreads. You could make videos for yourself. It doesn't even need to be uploaded to an audience. It can just be videos or recordings or like podcast style clips that you, you film and talk about what you've learned. You might be lucky enough even to have a, a close friend or family member who is willing to listen to you, talk about whatever you've read, something interesting. And it forces you, of course, you can have interesting conversations then, but it forces you to also explain it in a way that's clear. Because once we're asked to explain something we've read, it can be hard sometimes because we, we feel like we've understood it, but not really. And once we have to express it in common speech, it's, it becomes difficult. But then if we truly understand it, which is the, the core of this idea, we'll be able to express that in our own words and we'll be able to check that we understand it. The point is the format can be absolutely anything as long as it allows you to take an idea, express it in your own words and then somehow deliver that to something else, whether it be yourself or an audience or a friend, it doesn't matter. Even if it never sees the light of day, it's still a way of teaching in a sense because you're you're writing it and explaining it as if someone else is going to read it. Even if it's in a, a journal of your own or some handwritten notes or video that no one's ever going to see on your phone, 
it's your, your teaching in a way. It could be an invisible audience and you, you have a whiteboard, you just pretend you're teaching to a class and that forces you really to, to know what you're talking about. And if you don't know what you're talking about, you, you won't be able to do it. And you'll think, okay, well, clearly I have not understood something there. Clearly there's something missing and I need to go over it or re-examine it. Or maybe I get this concept, but there's one, there's one missing chain in the link. My version of this technique is the YouTube channel. And I write articles on the side and tweets and all that stuff. And it forces me to not only understand what I'm saying in the first place, but it gives me that chance to reiterate it in, in a way that I would do so. And not the author's words. And I can pluck everything I want from other sources and kind of synthesize them into one with my own twist. And I hope, for hopefully I'm not making stuff up in these videos, but when I speak about a topic, I try to understand it first, because I have to. If I don't, it's gonna sound idiotic. So with all that said, the fifth and final step is to just go out and do it, teach. Teach what you learn, because even if that sounds like a scary idea at first, as if you don't know, as if you're not prepared to do that, chances are you are. And the knowledge in your head is worth something and it's actually valuable. And even if it's not public at first, something that you put out there in the in the world for people to see, it's a chance for you to accelerate your learning and understand more. And if, if you make that an integral part of you, how you read and learn, then you'll find that it becomes a habit throughout your reading. You find uh, passages or examples that you just automatically explain to yourself in your own words, just to see if you understood it. And the best thing about this, which is completely a side effect, is that if you take something you're interested in and you publish it for people to see, whether it's videos or articles or a podcast or anything, in, in the application of this technique, it could take off. Like, you'll be surprised how many people may want to hear what you have to say about a certain topic. Like perhaps you're really into Roman history or or you love some branch of engineering or something, any of your niche interests that you know a lot about and you're kind of an authority on because you've spent so much time learning, people want to listen to that. There's always a, an audience out there willing to listen and learn. And just through practice, just through applying this technique for your own benefit, you could have the side effect of actually having people who come wanting to see more. I find that it helps to use this example that you can try now. You can just take this example and try it immediately. And it's to translate the phrase in your own words. And the phrase is, nothing acts except what is actual. I'll say that again. Nothing acts except what is actual. And I, I stole that from Mortimer J. Adler's How to Read a Book. At, at first that sounds like gibberish. And it, it seems like, it seems confusing at first, but the point is that we can process that and then take it into our own words and that forces us to then understand the deeper meaning behind it. So let's break it down. And I, I encourage you to pause and try it yourself to write it down and see what does this actually mean in simple words. But if we're going to walk through it, then it would be, okay, first, nothing acts except what is actual. Well, what is acting? When you act on something, you are doing something to it or to someone. And then we can take the second part of that sentence. What is What does it mean to be actual? Well, when you say something is actually the case, it means it's true and it's real. So something that is actual must exist in the real world. And therefore, and then once we put those two things together, nothing acts except what is actual. Well, that's another way to say that something cannot do anything if it's not real. Or rather, oh, did I get that right? Something can only do something to something else if it's real, essentially. That's the principle in action. We took something abstract and complicated, understood the idea behind it, and now we can say it in a million different ways. There's another great example of this that I want you to try, and it's a quote from St. Thomas Aquinas. And I'm going to ask you to translate it in your own words. And it's, whatever is received is received according to the nature of the recipient. And like... As usual with philosophers, it sounds like a lot at first, but if we are to say we understand it, we have to be able to see behind the mask of the words and know the concept behind it. So let's break that down and I encourage you to try the same. Whatever is received is received according to the nature of the recipient. 
So when something is received, say information or an object or an experience, it's received in the light of what the person receiving it is. So the person who receives that, who gets something, the, the way they are will change the interpretation of the message they get. And maybe I didn't do the best job explaining that, but St. Thomas is saying here is that our preconceptions and our prejudices will change the way we perceive new information. And right there, I understood the concept. And then I could use examples. I can now take the idea and apply it in a million different situations just because I understood it. And there's always the most important thing is action, to go out there and do something with it and to really apply this technique and you'll feel it improving your learning. So good luck with that and thank you for watching.